first sound that we all experience, even before we are born, is the regular pulse of our mother's heartbeat. It's so loud. As babies, before we even form memories, being held close by our parents and listening to their hearts beating has an incredibly comforting effect. As we get older, it is important to realise that how fast or slow your heart beats can control how you are feeling from one moment to the next. Right now, while you're watching this, are you aware how fast your heart is beating? Can you hear it? Can you feel it? Maybe you've just had a disagreement with a brother or sister and your heart is pounding with a feeling of frustration. Or maybe someone has just done something kind and unexpected for you and your heart is beating slower and you're full of the warm glow that comes from friendship and kindness. Have you ever really stopped and noticed your heartbeat and the speed that it's beating? Just take a moment now and put your hand on your chest and see if you can feel or even hear your heart beating. If you can't hear it just now, don't worry. But just before you go to sleep tonight, perhaps just listen in again and carefully just see if you can hear your heart beating. Our bodies are all ruled by all sorts of different pulses. We breathe in a regular pattern. Our eyes blink every few seconds. And when we're walking somewhere, our feet stride on the ground at regular intervals. All of these natural rhythms in our bodies are not something we normally notice, but they have a huge influence on how we feel, how we think, and how we... It should come as no surprise then that when we are listening to music, how fast or slow that music is can influence our thoughts and it can make us feel a certain way. Have a listen to the beginning of the variations from Tchaikovsky's Piano Trio and ask yourself, how fast or slow do you think this is? How does the choice of tempo affect the way you feel about the music? And how do the notes convey that feeling or character? Just like our heartbeats need to stay regular to keep us alive and healthy, music needs a regular pulse to convey meaning and to be easily understood. When you are listening to the piece by Tchaikovsky that we just played, you will have noticed that the pulse was quite calm and subdued. This immediately creates an atmosphere that we all understand. None of you listening would have imagined that this music was angry or that the music was excited or even panicked. Instead, you may have imagined warm sunshine, a beautiful view or the warmth of a hug, or perhaps you imagined something else entirely. This music is tender and it's loving music and the tempo chosen had a big influence on how you felt when you heard it just now. The word tempo literally means time in Italian. Generally, a piece of music will have an Italian word at the beginning to give us, the performers, an idea 
of how the composer imagined the piece should go. Why do we use Italian? Because it's a much more descriptive language than English. For example, allegro. This tells us to play in an energetic way, making the music full of life. The closest English word would be alive, but it's usually translated as lively or even quick. There are several different musical terms that all roughly translate to mean a slow piece. Largo, it means slow, but think of the English word that it most sounds like or even looks like. Largo, large. It's not just slow. It means that the music must sound like it needs effort to move along. It's ponderous and heavy. We have to make it sound like the beats are the footsteps of a an elephant or a hippopotamus. Large animals that cannot move quickly. Adagio is another Italian word used to describe slow movement, but it means something subtly different, literally with ease or comfortably. These are completely different ideas, which yes, all mean that the speed is slow, but the important thing to remember is that music is all about conveying characters and every ingredient in the music needs to support that character. The music that you've just heard is marked Andante con Moto, which literally means as if you are walking with motivation. It's that feeling of walking into a store when you know you're just about to buy something that you've always wanted. You're so excited to get there that you just can't help but walk just that little bit faster. Andante is normally translated as meaning walking pace, but again, the English is not that helpful because the speed at which we all walk can be different and it can be changed by your mood. So it's more important to think about andante as meaning going, moving or getting somewhere in music. The music has to always feel like it's making progress towards a destination. As performers, one of the first decisions that we make in rehearsal when we come together for the first time is what our tempo should be. How fast or slow a piece of music should be played. Each of us usually have a slightly different opinion on exactly how fast or slow we would like to play something. And inevitably when we start playing together, we change our minds over the first few rehearsals. Have a listen to this next extract. Does it sound familiar? same melody that the piano played a moment ago, but this time the tune was played in the violin. Did the music feel equally calm or did the flow of continuous faster notes in the piano make a difference? The pulse has remained the same speed, but now there is a feeling of more momentum because the piano is continuously decorating the melody. How did that change the character of the music? Have you ever been walking somewhere with adults who are walking slowly and deep in conversation? Maybe you're with friends or siblings darting ahead, running around the adults, but always still roughly travelling to wherever you're going at that frustratingly slow speed. This is what the music has just done. The melody is still exactly as calm and as peaceful as before, but because the piano is so busy, it has injected more energy and life into the character of the music. We're talking here, of course, about rhythms, which can have a huge effect on how fast or slow we understand this piece of music to be. 
Rhythm is how many notes fit inside each beat of a piece of music. We'll talk more about this in another video, but for now, just know that the notes come in different lengths. And if they are small enough, it's possible to fit lots of them inside each and every pulse. Here the piano is playing 16th notes and could fit four of them inside each beat. This has the effect of giving the music more momentum. Listen now to a little more of the trio and see if you can hear the effect of those faster rhythms. chatting with friends, do you sometimes find that the speed of your conversation can get faster? When does this happen? Is it when someone gets excited about an idea? Is it when there's a disagreement? Is it because you're running out of time and you really need to say what you need to say? Of course, it could be all of these reasons and many more. Speech is just like music and controlling how fast we speak can make a real difference on how we are understood. In this next extract, you will hear that it's the cello's turn to play the melody. He's obviously been impatient to have his go, so when he finally gets the chance, he pushes the pulse to a faster, more exciting tempo. As you listen to this next extract, see if you can hear what is happening in the violin and the piano parts. How do their notes and rhythms affect how fast or slow we understand this passage to be? from the piano and then the violin. The meaning of the melody has changed due to the faster tempo. Not only that, but the violin is darting around with all those fast rhythms. It's like the violin liked what the piano was doing just a moment ago and wants to take it that one step further and really show off. The overall effect is something much more exciting and energetic from that calm and serene solo piano opening. This same situation often arises when we're talking with each other. We can be having a really great conversation when suddenly the speed increases, someone says something upsetting, someone else reacts badly and things quickly escalate into an argument. It's so useful in those situations to realise that by controlling how fast or slow we speak, we can completely change the meaning of the words that we are using. Music has so much to teach us about how we use our voices in everyday conversation. In this next extract, it's the piano's turn to shine and the speed increases just a little once again. Not only that, but for the first time in this piece, Tchaikovsky uses 30 second notes, even smaller, faster notes than we've heard so far. The piano flies up and down all over the place so listen out to how the strings now contribute and ask yourself what is the effect of an even faster tempo and flying rhythms here oh and see if you can still hear where the melody is hiding in this extract <laughs>
even though this is now the fastest tempo that we've heard so far, because the strings are plucking, something we call pizzicato, and the piano writing is so light, the mood and the character are completely different to the cello variation that we just heard. This extract is marked scherzando, which means jokingly. So here, the increased speed has the effect of making the music more light and sparkly. As instrumentalists, it's thrilling to play fast music, but you may be surprised to know that the only way to practice fast music is to prepare it slowly and carefully. You can never make something better at full speed. Instead, you have to find ways to carefully improve how your brain and how your fingers work together at a much slower tempo. It's painstaking work that needs to happen over hours and days and weeks ahead of the first rehearsal. Taking enough time and starting the work early enough is so important to our learning process. That's why we have to practice every day, so we can sleep on the work that we have done and come back the next day to discover what has improved and what still needs more work. That passage in the piano that you have just heard whizzing around took several weeks to learn at a fraction of the speed before I was able to feel confident and fluent enough to rehearse with my colleagues. We're now going to play you all of the music together in one go and you'll hear the theme in the piano and then the three variations. And as you listen to this now familiar piece, think about how the speed affects the character of the music and your own mood and thoughts. Music has a very powerful effect on our own heart rates. So just by listening to this music, your pulse will react one way or another. The same is true when you are talking to someone. So it's very useful to know that just by controlling the speed of your own talking, you have the power to make someone feel better in that moment.